Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 esports video. This is round 11 around Mexico and it's been a while since I uploaded an F1 esports video as I was finishing off a career mode of course and I started the co-op series together with Jake um, but now it's time to finish off the F1 esports series highlights and this is round 11 as I said. We're just heading out for our first Q1 run and uh, this qualifying is going to be one of the most important ones of the year. As you guys might know, the championship is extremely tight um, between me, uh, Freddy Erasmussen and Lucas Blakely. You can see there, after Imola, Lucas took quite a big blow there uh, after getting front wing damage. We took P2 ahead of Freddy Erasmussen in P3. And that means we're leading Freddy Rasmussen by 11 points and leading Lucas Blakely by 22 points. So... Um, we can actually win the championship uh, in this round, uh, which is crazy uh, with two races to go. But, um, you know, it all depends uh, how we do and how um, Freddy and Lucas do. We also might lose a lot of points um, to both of them, but luckily we have a bit of margin to play with. Usually I am pretty strong around Mexico and um, last year I managed to win here at also against Freddy Rasmussen who finished P2 back then. I was battling him for the win. And today I hope uh, we can get pole position ahead of him. But you never know, it's extremely tight. It's a high risk track with very easy to uh, get a track limit in validation. Which we really uh, don't want of course, because that means um, all the pressure is gonna be on that, one, uh, or that last lap in Q1. Um, ideally you, get through into Q2 on one set of tires and into Q3 on another new set of tires and then you have two new sets for Q3 but it's not that easy uh, if the field is so close and we've seen every round this year the field be incredibly close and as you can see they're heading through the chicane bit of oversteer but we managed to get it pretty decent you know uh, not too much risk taken on my first Q1 run and it's a 28.266 first sector um, which is all right, it's not great, but it will do for now. And as you guys might hear or not hear, there's no sound, which is, as I said in previous episodes, um, because we were really focusing on the performance part, especially in this last round, we really did not really care about the recordings. We were just focusing so much on the performance. And for this year, um, the upcoming F1 2022 esports season, um, usually F1 Esports starts in around September, October. We will be much better prepared, so uh, we will record every race with probably better quality and also with sound. Um, as yeah, last year it was just pretty chaotic um, start of the season for us as a team. But first Q1 lap done, it's P2 behind Yoni Tormala. And as you can see, I had to go again just to make sure I could go into Q2. Um, we would have been fine with that first lap, as you can see. We did a 6-7, which would have been enough for P10. But I just didn't want to take the risk. Um, and we ended up P5 with the last lap here. So, yeah, a bit safe. But um, now we have to get through into Q3 on um, one new set of tires. Unless we can do something amazing on this new set of tires. You can see with two tens up. And this is my... Uh, use set of tires that I used in the beginning of Q1. So we're doing very well. You can see Marshall Kiefer, sorry, 113.5. And up to the line, we're gonna set a 113.486 fastest on a used set of tires, which is quite uh, quite good. And now um, I felt like I had to go again. So I put on a new set of tires and decided uh, to go again in case um, halfway through the lap I could see that it would have been enough then I could always back off and save the set of tires for Q3 but we're gonna get a new set of uh, tires in Q3 anyway and you know usually the last lap is where it counts anyway in Q3 so I felt like uh, better safe than sorry so I decided to push on this new set of softs you can see we're a bit down to our used tires um, through the first section and that first section is just all about flow it's all about being on the limit and not invalidating uh, and now you can see the tire effect is starting to kick in 600s up heading into the fast section here 
Uh, Nicolas Longe goes faster with a 113.3. Bit tricky there with the track limits. You can see I was really on the edge, uh, which you just have to be around here, you know? It's just so uh, tricky, you have to be on it, track limit wise, which is scary if you're fighting for the championship and the championship is so tight. But that is what makes the difference um, between who's gonna win the championship or not. You have to perform well. And I heard through the radio that um, my laptop was gonna be enough. And that's why I decided to back off, you know? Uh, if you cross the line, then your AI keeps pushing around and that set of tires is basically done. So I pulled into the box, only P7, but doesn't matter at all. Um, P7 sees us go through into Q3 and now we've got another, not a new set, but you know, a lot better set to set our first Q3 lap on. And that's crucial. You can see coming up to the line now, a 113.67, which I was very disappointed with because that is my slowest time of the whole qualifying session so far, even though it was a pretty good set of tires. Um, I was pretty surprised to see that and I was pretty disappointed, not gonna lie. So um, this is the one where it's gonna count. We were still P4 with that uh, lap time. So that's very surprising. I think a lot of people invalidated the first Q3 runs. So, you know, gonna keep pushing. Um, and this is the lap where it's gonna count. This might be crucial for the championship. And I didn't really get it left and right, but the right-hander was spot on. And that's where a lot of time, the time comes from on that exit and into sector two, a 28.058. It's not great, but it's enough. And it keeps us in the fight for pole position into the next right and a bit of oversteer. And every bit of oversteer you get, that's gonna add on a little bit of tire temperature. And that is gonna make you struggle through this fast section, but also in the last sector. And the last sector is where all the time is. Now through the fast section, DRS open. We're 1.3 tenths up. Marcel Kiefer goes on professional pole position with a 113.3. Barry Bormand improves on that. And this is where we can make up so much time compared to our used tire when bit too much inside curb. I clip the curb, which is not ideal. And now up to the line, we're gonna be three tenths up coming across the line. And we're just gonna go ahead of Marcel Kiefer and Nicolas Longe. P2 behind Barry Bormand for now. Freddy Rasmussen goes pole position with a 113.275. Exactly one tenth faster than us. Can our teammate Danny Moreno do anything? No, he can't. So that's P8 for teammate Lucas Blakely, P7. Or not nearest championship rival, or second nearest championship rival in P7. And that's giving me some confidence. Can Michael Romanides do anything? He can't, and that sees us go into P3. And not gonna lie, I was happy with that, because as you guys might know from real life F1, the run into turn one is so long that you might be better off starting in P3 than in P1. And I felt just very confident in this P3 position, as um, you can see, um, heading into the race now, me, Freddy, and Barry are on the softs, and then basically, Everyone behind us, all on the mediums. Um, there might be a random down in P12 or P13 on the softs. Um, I don't know exactly, but everyone well, could be a threat behind us, all on the mediums. So um, it's very important to get a good start here and get that slipstream into turn one. That's gonna be crucial um, for the rest of the race. We cannot let a medium runner slip up or inside and get ahead of us because that would cost us a lot of time. So into the race now, which is waiting for the final car to line up on the grid uh, here for round 11 of the 2021 Formula Esports World Champion. It's gonna be five red lights and away we go for the second last time in the 2021 F1 Esports Series. It's a good launch. Barry Mermont got an absolute rocket launch of his grid position and now as I said the slipstream is crucial into turn one down the inside of Barry Barry goes a little bit wide he locks up and we take the lead of round 11 uh, on lap one and now we can control the race from here we used a lot of ERS off the line but we got the track position and now we can dictate the pace basically um, we want to get away from the medium runners of course because they might be a threat later on so I cannot really afford to save my tires uh, in this opening laps uh, we need to get away from those medium runners pull out of the DRS and then we can fight from there um, but for now very good start 
um, for us. And you can see, nearing the end of lap four, we have 4.4 seconds ahead um, of Marcel Kiefer on the mediums. And that just shows how strong this set of softs is in the first uh, few laps. Uh, four seconds gained in four, sec uh, four laps, basically. So very, very solid opening laps for the top three here. And now Barry is going to get DRS. It's a double detection, which means uh, Barry is going to get DRS on the main straight, but also the straight afterwards. So there's one detection and two DRS zones, and that means I'm not going to fight Barry here. Um, I was running a little bit low on ERS, so I decided, you know what, you can get ahead, and I'm just going to sit behind, recharge my battery a little bit, and then we can work together. Because basically, you either want to be P1 or P2. Um, so whoever is P1 and P2 want to work together, you know? You can always fight out um, for the win later on in the race, but you just need to work together if you want to get a good result um, in any race. So P1, P2 is where it's at. And now with the help of the DRS, you can see my battery is basically completely recharged into turn one. Um, my battery is gonna go up to 90%, um, heading on to the second straight. You see, I'm pretty pushing it there with the track limits. Absolutely spot on. And now Barry's not gonna get DRS on this straight. So he's just gonna uh, sit back there. End of lap 11, you can see we are uh, stretching the gap a little bit to Barry. Um, so I think he's struggling a little bit on tires and yeah, that confirms it. He's gonna box for a new set of mediums and we're gonna push on. You can see Freddy Rasmussen or championship rival 1.2 seconds behind us. He's gonna close that gap with the help of DRS, of course. The straight is so incredibly long. Uh, he just gained like three, four tenths with the help of DRS. And then once again on the second straight, he's gonna gain another one and a half to two tenths. So it's a little bit shorter. Um, but yeah, this is basically gonna be my in-lap because if I stay out another lap, that means Freddy will get ahead of us. And I don't really want that. Um, tires are starting to get tricky as well, of course. So if I would stay out another lap, Barry would definitely undercut us. Um, yeah, that's not really what we want. Um, or it's, it's, it's not a problem as if we would come out in P2, but uh, if I don't pit this lap, then Freddy will pit and he will undercut us. And that means we will come out in P3. And that's not what I want. I want to either be P1 or P2 out of all times, uh, no matter what. Now into the final sector then. We are six tenths ahead of Freddy Rasmussen. He's gonna get DRS down the main straight again, um, but we're gonna box. So he will get quite a bit of advantage there, which is gonna limit it or um, undercut for basically doing on him. But um, it is what it is. We just have to box now for a new set of mediums. Um, and it's gonna be interesting to see where we're gonna come out, uh, ahead or behind Barry. Barry was around nine tenths behind us when he boxed. And the undercut is not very strong here. Um, going from soft to medium. So, um, Freddy staying out one lap longer might be the right play, depending on where we come out. We're gonna come out with 100% ERS. And you can see there, we're gonna be ahead of Barry Boromant. And that shows that we had a very, very good in-lap. Um, but we have to push on this out-lap. Um, because both me and Barry basically want to get ahead of Freddy. As then we control the race. And can fight that out later on, basically. You can see Brendan Lee. Um, 4.9 seconds behind us. He went aggressive as I think he started in P13. Um, he started on the mediums and then boxed very early for softs and decided to go long on softs. So that's an interesting strategy. Um, I think it's a bit of a desperate call for track position, which is a really good strategy if you're starting in the mid midfield. Uh, going aggressive with that undercut and then just getting track position. Um, get you for get yourself as far up front as possible. You can see I'm really pushing it through that middle sector here, as we need to get it undercut on Freddy Rasmussen. Um, PJ has to set Brandon on the set of softs. Already in half a second, so he's doing pretty well. He's a purple uh, lap, um, so I think he boxed at around the end of lap 10. So 15 laps on the set of softs is very long, but if you're setting P13, that's a solid strategy. I think so. Um, getting some track position early on. And now we can see there, Freddy Rasmussen coming out just behind a Barry Burman. So he's back where he was, but he has one lap fresher tires than me and two lap fresher tires than Barry Burman. So that might be a big factor um, coming down to the closing laps. Although, you know, 12, 13 laps on the set of mediums is not much. 
Um, the tire deck is not much around here, but uh, it might just make the difference, of course. So it's going to be interesting to see if Freddy can do something um, later on in this race. Now on to lap 19. Um, you can see 65% battery um, going on to the long straight, and it basically means we're on 50 by the end of the straight, so we don't really have much battery uh, left here. And I decided, you know what, Barry, you can get ahead. And I saw all the way down the straight that Freddy was pushing it as well. And that's why I had to turn on the overtake again, because I do not want to drop down uh, to P3. So Barry goes down the inside here, and we just manage to keep it in P2 uh, with Barry taking the lead. But now I'm not going to get DRS on the second straight, so I had to use my overtake button again. And that's just not a very ideal, that's not what I wanted. I had to go defensive there. And now we only got 27% battery left. So we're in a very awkward situation here with Ultimate Strategy Runners um, joining us uh, right behind us. Brendan Lee in P5 and our teammate Danny Moreno in P4. Um, and one lap later, I had to overtake Barry because otherwise Freddy was going to get past us. You can see there, Freddy gaining all the time, using his battery. And now we go around the outside of Barry Burmond into turn one and we're gonna take back uh, P1. Barry and Freddy fighting side by side on that exit. Freddy goes wide and up to P2 he goes. We have the DRS on the second straight so we could chill a bit and uh, we had to recharge the battery so fast you know. Um, luckily I was I think a little bit lower wings than the Red Bull um, which helped with the recharge of the battery of course. And now into the f we're heading towards the final lap, and Freddy is two tenths behind. And as I said earlier on, a double detection is coming up, and we are gonna play a very interesting game here. We're letting Freddy by just before the detection point, and now we're P2 heading into the final lap of the race. But we are gonna get DRS on this incredibly long straight. We've got 50% battery starting the final lap of the race, and we're gonna get DRS tucking in the slipstream of Freddy Rasmussen. This is so crucial for the championship in the slipstream down the inside of Freddy Rasmussen. And now we've got the inside for the right hander. We go a little bit deep, but we're gonna get DRS on the next straight, which is so crucial. We're gonna turn on the overtake button again, and Freddy is right with us in the slipstream. Can he do anything? No, he cannot. And we're gonna be clear into the next left hander. Barry goes for a move behind us, but can't really pull it off. And this is a 14 point swing in the championship. So this is so crucial for our championship's hopes heading into the final round. All we have to do is keep it on track now, checking our tire for final time, heading into this fast section, making sure I don't get any track um, limit invalidations. And you can see there we're four tenths clear. We don't have any battery left. Freddy's gonna get DRS for a final time, but we're too far ahead into the final sector. You can see now all we have to do is keep it clean. A little bit of a lock up as my tires are dropping off as well, of course. And our teammate Danny Moreno in a so solid P4, he's managed to uh, pull off a remarkable recovery. And this was such a crucial last lap for our World Championship hopes. And with our teammate Danny Moreno finishing P4, with me overtaking Frederick, uh, Frederick sorry, uh, in that last lap, we've won the Constructors' Championship. Um, as we are now, I think, 44 points ahead. And that means uh, no one can overtake us anymore. Um, as the maximum a constructors can get is um, 44. So we've got 44, 45 points, sorry. Uh, I've got it wrong. Um, but you can see there, Freddy got a three second, uh, no, not a three second time penalty, a one second time penalty. And that dropped him to P3 as he overtook Barry Bormand off track um, at some point out of turn three. And that means we've got a 21 point lead heading into uh, Brazil. And Lucas Blakely out of the title hopes now. Now into the final race. It's going to be a very exciting one. Hope you guys enjoyed this F1 Esports video. Round 11, a crucial one for the championship. And make sure to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more, of course. And see you guys next time. Ciao.